What's up guys, welcome to the channel this episode. We're back on the EV truck guys. We are getting this thing dialed in. As we said in previous episodes, the inverter gave us a little issues. So we have a brand new one on deck to put in. Also, we're gonna be getting with Chris from Zero EV to do some tuning. So I think that our large Tesla motor wasn't designed to work with the Model 3, so it's drawing a lot of amperage and it's getting into like a fail safe, basically. Right. Cutting the throttle input so I don't damage anything. We have to kind of fine tune it and make sure that the amperage isn't spiking as we're laying into the throttle. Also, some little fine tuning stuff at light throttle input. I was talking to a couple guys at the Holly EV Fest and it was definitely something that everybody is plagued with with these large drive units that slight judder or shuddering from the motor at right. light throttle input a couple of guys said they spent over 40 hours just trying to tune out this issue so we're going to get on that and hopefully square that away we got some oh, yeah. new tesla pumps that we're going to be putting in for the coolant system on the front drive unit so this thing should be going down the road so let's start getting to work and start getting some new tunes for the motors and see how it runs All right, so our new inverter is almost all set. Got the new one all switched over. I had to end up changing out the bus bar contacts for the motor itself. For whatever reason, the one that on the donor one we got had these like weird blue things on there. They're like magnets or something. They slid over the end. So they wouldn't go through our billet adapter piece. So I went ahead and swapped them out from the old inverter. And we also swapped over our zero EV motor controller. And this is actually what controls the motor. You guys are commenting in other videos as to how we control it. And this is actually hooked up via Wi-Fi. So there's no wires or anything hanging out of the motor. Everything looks nice and factory. You just have to log into the system with a Wi-Fi signal and you can change the parameters of your motor controller. So what we're gonna do now is we have to put our wires in for our water temperature sensors and a couple other things. And then we'll be able to put our cap on and get our new inverter back in the truck and see how we're running with all wheel drive finally. That junction box right there that we have, it's a polycarbonate non-conductive black box, AKA electrical department <laughs> at Home Depot. That's the junction where the factory uh, Tesla cables come into the box and then they transfer into a aftermarket style cable that then goes all the way into the positive and negative side of the motor. And that's our high voltage power supply. So why is it that I'm touching these and it's not zapping the crap out of me right now? Because we don't have the high voltage contactors closed to put the battery pack voltage into the cables. So when you're messing with an electric car and you're wiring it all up, mm -hmm. people think automatically you hook these high voltage cables up, you're gonna die. No, that's not the truth. It has a large relay, which they call a high voltage contactor, that is open at the moment. So it's not making any kind of physical connection to allow the battery pack to flow voltage out of the cable. So the last thing we gotta do is hook this bad boy up and then hit a button, hopefully it'll do something. We're gonna test some things before we just hook it up and press the button. But yeah, that's the theory. At no point ever should this positive and this negative ever have continuity. Got my handy multimeter right here on deck. We'll go into a resistance mode. I'll put the continuity check, hear that beep, and you can see the readout, there is continuity here. I can do it in plenty of different places on the vehicle. Boom, continuity. One place we don't want it is here. So here's the positive side, and here's our negative. No continuity. I'm just gonna turn on the high voltage right now. For the front motor? Yeah. And then see what happens. So our high voltage is live at the moment. Right? And then we come over here. 346 volts. Yeah. So we're powered up. That's good. Now we have to start going in and, and just programming. I'm gonna see if I can get just the front one to come on and then we're gonna go ahead and try to make them both work at the same time. So for this test, I just wanna use the front only. So let's see if I can make that happen. I had to go and change a couple parameters because we've never really used the front. So now I have our front motor on. It's live, the ignition's on, front motor's on. I'm gonna put in drive and we should have action. Jackson. What? Oh wow. Yep. That's the front. Oh, that's the rear motor? That's the rear motor. Now we'll do front and rear. <laughs> you maverick. No way. It's everything. That's all the beans? Oh. Look how fast that is. You see it? 
All wheel drive, pack it up, go. <laughs> okay, okay. Thanks for watching, everybody. Now I'm gonna go in and kind of fine tune all the parameters like we've been doing for the rear motor. So we need to add the pump for the front motor and then fill her up and then we can drive it. Andrew got all the hoses hooked back up. Everything seemed to be working great. And then we went to fill the front radiator and turn the water pumps on. And what do you have it? We have some pinholes in our radiator. Not from factory, Mishimoto, awesome radiator, great product. It was our fault. We did weld some brackets on. Some of the welds must have penetrated through the casing on the radiator and caused a couple little pinholes. So first step is to get all this stuff taken off. All these beauty panels, intercoolers, so we can pull this radiator out from the top. We wanna to show you that four wheel burnout. We wanna show you it ripping around the track. I know everybody's waiting, so am I. Trust me, we all are waiting. So let's get to it. All right, so that wasn't as bad as I thought. We got the radiator out. You know, these are all added brackets that we put onto the radiator. And I believe it's leaking through a couple of these little pinholes that I could see. Hopefully it shouldn't be a big deal. That's just a pain in the butt. All right, we got the radiator on the welding table. In order to find our leaks, what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop these two ports with a three quarter inch heater hose, a couple uh, dash 12 vibrant fittings loop these two together and I'm gonna use my drain hole to put some pressured air in there and hopefully we'll be able to see where any holes might be on these brackets. Pressure test is done. I discovered two tiny little holes there's a little pinhole right there. So that's circled. And then I got one over here on this bracket where it was welded to the radiator right there. So I'll put a little arrow for Timmy. When you're welding on radiators, before you put them into your car, I suggest you do exactly what I just did. Pressure test it. When you're ready to, to, to start your car and to start driving, you don't have to pull it all pack apart. Okay, playing what's in the box again. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that logo. Man, we're going over Ooh. the dark side, Andrew. Ooh. We're going to the dark side, man. Straight from the factory. Straight from the source. Oh. This thing's brand new. So Elon's gonna be super happy we got one of these for an old Chevy pickup truck. Thanks, Elon. I don't know, I think it's a uh, vacuum cleaner. I'm staring at some binary code flipping up and down on the laptop. I don't know what any of this stuff means, honestly. Right now, we have Nginx sending us the TAN messages to charge our battery, and it seems that it's working. I'm not 100% sure yet. Since we got the battery out of the salvage yard, we've been going on the same charge, which was like 67 or 78%, something like that. And we've just been kind of depleting the battery since we've had the truck running. We're using a complete Model 3 Tesla battery pack. And so what we're doing is using all the hardware that is a factory Tesla. And instead of the factory Tesla working in its own network with all its other control modules, we are using the Nginx CAN bus controller to send the messages that it needs to do all the different operations, whether it be charging the battery, changing it to drive mode, turning it off. So for you guys who want to do an electric car conversion, it's one thing to get the battery, it's another thing to get the motor, it's another thing to wire it. But once you have all those components, you have everything put together, then you have to make everything talk to each other and get along. It charged. It charged for 
One percent. One percent. One percent, and then it hit a fault. During the charging process, the battery sees the most heat. With that being said, it has safeties in it to where if the battery gets too hot, it'll slow the charge rate or completely stop the charge rate. We have coolant in the battery system, but we didn't have it flowing, nor did we have fans on. Are we gonna have to program a charge mode with the fans and the pumps? Correct, that's what's gonna have to happen. So this thing's gonna be eating electricity while you're filling up electricity. Yes. Super efficient. Super efficient. We can turn the rear on, which is gonna turn the pump on. Yep. There's the pump right there, guys, you can hear it. So now we have coolant cycling through. All right, well, let's turn the fans on then. So a lot of people at home are probably like, well, you're going to be wasting electricity while you're filling this thing up. It's almost like running the car while you're filling the gas tank. Right. But there's a big difference between a high voltage system and a low voltage system. It's system. feeding it, you know, 390 volts at 40 amps. It's the low voltage stuff is 12 volts. These fans maybe run a continuous 8 amps and the pump like maybe 5 amps. It's a drop in the bucket compared to what it's putting into the battery pack. Could be it, man. Be we day. finally got both motors working. The front is live. We got coolant rolling through everything. The motors, the battery pack. Once we get out of the back of the shop here, we're gonna take her on our first rip with both motors working. Whoa! Why is that happening? Something's going on there. What are you feeling? It just doesn't feel right in the front. Something don't feel right. All right, well, let's stop and take a look. The stock subframe here, this is a little oh, bit of a Look at that. Snapped. Yeah. Somebody is really not wanting us to drive this car all wheel drive. I don't know. <laughs> we called Jeff from JG3D. He helped us out with our inverter plate. <laughs> so we're going to get the EV truck up on the lift inside the shop. And finally, then maybe Billy Bob over here can take hey, the thing for a spin. Hey, <laughs> Tim, while it's on the lift, get your little TIG torch out. Weld that little tab over there. What's your number? Uh, I'm gonna weld it up, buddy. I'm gonna Robert. weld all the tabs for Appreciate you. Appreciate that, man. So, Andrew, if you could pick one thing you're gonna change about this truck right now, what would it be? <laughs> right now? <laughs> the suspension. Or, I'm sorry, the lack thereof. Oh, be gentle. So, what we did, guys, because we were under some time constraints, we made a decision to do like a standard coilover setup. The spring rates are not correct. They were way too light for this truck. These are little babies. It looked like you could hold a Civic on. Will you stop it? Will you, be, will you stop being so judgmental of this setup? Right. Jeffrey. Jeff, welcome back. What's happening? JG3D. That's me. We are going to go back to our original plan to do push rod suspension in the front and rear of the EVC10. I told you that's what you should have done in the first place. We didn't have the time, man. Why don't you stop it? So we're gonna make some rockers, do like a 14 inch coilover shock that's got an eyelet on the top, eyelet mm -hmm. on the bottom. The eyelet on one side, and then we'll make a nice little billet bracket in the center there to capture both coilovers. And we'll be able to adjust the ride height, bump rebound, all that stuff right there on the back of the truck. The hard part is the front. We ended up running into some binding issues down here with the coilover. It's hitting the actual axle for the all-wheel drive system. Originally, I wanted to do push rod because obviously this, this guy right here is not working out. So with the push rod suspension, instead of having all this in here, we're just gonna have like one single one inch piece of molly that's gonna come straight down in this vicinity. And we're actually gonna be able to go out on the arm. So it's gonna be closer to the pivot point where you wanna be. That's gonna give you the most leverage and your suspension is gonna work the best. So the coilovers I think could go across that crossbar right there. Mm -hmm. We could do like a bracket with like a half moon yep. doodad. Rocker arm is up here in the corner. We're gonna get rid of this bracket and then we'll have the coilover kind of come down. I mean, it's all about us getting in CAD and then we can just test and tune any way we want. We're gonna get the Peel 3D scanner out, scan the front of the truck, scan the back. You'll be able to have all that data and then from there, we'll be able to design our actual rockers, yep. place all our suspension for KW so that we can get a better, more proper suspension set up. So Jeff, are you ready to scan? Let's get scanning. Let's get scanning, man.
Jeff is the last one here at the shop. What are you still doing here? I got a lot of data. We got the rear end scanned, cleaning it up and getting it all oriented right. So from here, when you put into SolidWorks, you'll be able to make all those little pieces like our control arms. You'll be able to make them pivot. Yep, since we're going with kind of a upper control arm cantilever setup, basically getting rid of all of this upper mount and getting rid of all of the shock right here, I'll have reference geometry for me to go in SolidWorks, start connecting the dots and making this whole thing work. It'll give us exact dimensions of everything that we're gonna need. We'll know how much chrome molly tubing we'll need. I'll be able to send the rocker arms to the CNC shop and get those all made out of billet. Now, guys, this design stage is something that is super pivotal to making a suspension like a push rod setup work. And it's time consuming. It, it's not easy to do. Jeff takes a lot of time to do something like this and Jeff's a genius when it comes to work and stuff like this. It's just something that when we first put the truck together and we had it going for SEMA, we just didn't have the time to do. So now that we have the time to really get in there and make it right, we're going to get dialed in and the suspension working perfect. We are also going to set down on some scales and get the weight because I know you guys been asking forever for this weight. So we're going to get the right weight for the truck so that we can get the right compression rate for our springs as well. That's also a big part of getting the suspension right. Next episode, you're gonna see him design the whole push rod suspension setup. You're gonna see it going in the truck. We'll have our steering rack welded back in so we can actually do some all wheel drive burnouts for you guys. We'll get ripping. We know you've wanted to see this truck rip and believe us, we've been working on this truck for eight months straight. We wanna see it ripping too. So thanks for sticking with us. We really appreciate all the patience when it comes to this build and we'll see you next time. Later. Wow, I mean, that was simple, huh? Was that sarcasm? I can't tell anymore. That was straight sarcasm, my dude. <laughs> that was that test drive, Mikey. I'm gonna tell you, Tim. <laughs> we came out of the hole. We're like a, like a rock. We did something, something down here. I don't know what it was. We had like 360 volts or something like that. 360.9. Something like but that. But who's keeping anyway. track? 346 volts. Yeah.